Okay, let's be real. I think no matter where you're moving, moving in general is just a pain in the ass. And you know guys, this is actually the third time that we've moved while living in Germany. And while we're very thankful to have some really great opportunities for different apartments here in the city, every time we move, it does kind of reinforce the idea that moving in Germany is actually extremely different than moving in the United States. And all of that kind of had me wondering, there are hundreds of videos out there that paint this rosy picture of what it's really like to move to or move within Germany. And while there are some definite perks, it had me wondering, why doesn't somebody tell the real story of what it's actually like to move? Now, this first point, if I'm gonna be honest, has taken me a while to really appreciate and embrace. It's that, quite frankly, if you're gonna move in Germany, there are certain things that you kind of have to do in person. And as somebody who moved to Germany from another country, this used to terrify me. I didn't know a lot of German when I first came and all of these conversations were, well, at a level of German that I just didn't fully understand and I was totally terrified of both making a fool of myself as well as saying the wrong thing and getting some extremely important legal document completely mixed up. But you know, now it, um, it kind of honestly feels quite satisfying because you know, when you write an email, you're kind of trusting that that person will do what they say they're going to do. And like I mentioned, a lot of the things around moving in Germany are, well, legally binding. So by going to these different offices and doing it in person, it just kind of gives you the reassurance that it was done properly and that everything is in order. But in order to do it, well, we're going to have to take a couple of trips. Okay, so one of the very first things on the list of to-dos, whether you're moving to or within Germany, is to register your new address at your local Bürgeramt or Rathaus. And importantly, you have to do this within two weeks of moving. Failure to do so could result in either a high fine or a significant reduction in your benefits, your insurances, or a disruption in your taxes and tax payments. Now, this is actually something that I learned while doing the research for this video. I had presumed that because we're moving to a new address in a new municipality, not only would we have to deregister here at the Rathaus im Stuhlinger, but that we would also need to re-register in the new municipality at our new address. However, curiously enough, I was told by Google that because we're going to a new municipality, whenever we anmeldung or register at our new address in our new city, they will automatically let Freiburg know that we've left. However, I kind of hate just to rely on Google here, so I think this is probably going to be the first opportunity in this video where we ask you for advice. Um, if you've done this before, if you have any recommendations for us, do we in fact need to deregister here at the Rathaus im Stuhlinger first and then register at the new address, or will our new municipality let Freiburg know? Yeah, let us know down in the comments section, please. But you know, I think the main point that needs to be made here is that going to the Bürgeramt or Rathaus is only one of the many trips you will need to make in preparation for your new move in Germany. And while German bureaucracy is efficient in many ways, it doesn't necessarily mean that one German federal office talks to another German federal office. So for example, if you're an immigrant family like we are, it'll also mean you'll need to make an appointment here at the Ausländerbehörde or your local immigration office to let them know about your change of address. And unless your new home is pretty close to your old home, it's also likely that your local Finanzamt or tax office will 
probably change as well. Now, for pretty obvious reasons, it's a good idea to keep the tax office up to date with your current address. But this is also super important for us because we're also business owners here in Germany. So not having a current address could mean that we could miss a pretty important document coming from the Finanzamt or not be up to date with where our current quarterly payment should be sent to. And quite frankly, whether it's in regards to the tax office or registering at your local city hall, both of these things are incredibly different from what you have to do when you move in the United States. In the US, there is no such thing as registering your new address. And while you might be proactive in letting your tax office know that you've moved, you can also just update them on your new address when you file your personal taxes the next tax year. Okay, now it's time for the second reality of moving in Germany. And that's that you're probably going to have to write at least a few letters. And yes, I mean physical letters with original signatures. And this is going to come to be quite a shock for our American viewers. No, an email in most cases won't suffice. And you can't even scan these letters with your original signatures and send them via email either, because then they're not original. So for example, for us to give our three months notice when we terminate our lease in this apartment, not only do we need to draft a letter in Word, but we'll then need to print it, sign it, and mail it via snail mail to our landlord. And it's not just our landlord, in fact. We actually have to also write a letter to the organization of Jack's Kita to terminate our contract with them, even though he'll be continuing there until the end of this school year. And also, fun fact, guys, um, although this is technically the official symbol of Germany, I'd like to argue that this is probably more appropriate a paper protector. Seriously, because original documents are so important here, I have never invested more in my entire life than in paper filing systems and paper protection systems, because especially when it comes to moving, those original documents become extremely important. So I'm sure somewhere on a yacht in the Caribbean is the person that holds the patent for these paper protectors. And he's probably sipping on champagne and eating caviar solely on the revenue generated from the sale of these in Germany. Because you see guys, even if you're not drafting original letters, having physical forms, again with original signatures, is most likely going to be the norm for most agencies and organizations when updating your address when moving in or to Germany. But this brings me to my next point, and that's that you might be able to make some of these arrangements over the telephone. When it comes to things like the internet or your phone line, it might be possible to keep your existing contract and just simply move them to a new address. However, in our case, we actually have completely different providers, even though we're only moving about 20 kilometers away. And for us, this caused us a couple of issues with our upcoming move. For starters, we sign a 12 month contract at a time. And unfortunately for us, the time when that contract ends doesn't exactly link up with when our move date is going to happen. Now, usually with many providers, you can simply just give them a three months notice. But for us, our provider requested a six month notice of a contract termination. So we actually had to make arrangements in November to cancel our home phone and internet in May. Thankfully this time we did it within the right time frame, but we actually made this mistake the last time we moved. We moved with only a three month notice. And because we again had that six month termination timeline, we actually had to double pay our internet and phone for two addresses for three months. And while in the grand scheme of things, this wasn't a huge cost, it is important to know because for many immigrant families like us, this was a significant departure from what we knew back in the United States. In most cases, a 30 month notice of a termination of contract is totally normal. But like some of the other examples I've given so far, things are just a little bit different here in Germany.
And last but certainly not least, the final piece of advice I would give for anyone moving to or within Germany is to hire some professionals. From a practical standpoint, this makes a lot of sense. We live on the German second floor, the American third floor, and we don't have an elevator. So we're going to need a lot of extra help carrying our washer, dryer, dining room table, refrigerator, and other heavy items down the stairs. But from an efficiency standpoint as well, Hiring professionals just quite frankly makes a lot of logistical sense. By going through professional movers, for example, they will actually coordinate with the city to get the appropriate permits to move. Seriously, in, in our case, we actually have to apply for special parking permits. You see, we live right in the city center and we don't have dedicated parking, which means that any mover that comes, well, they're going to need to park somewhere. And the only street parking around us is metered parking. So rather than rolling the dice and hoping that they find a spot close by and one that's big enough to allow them to not only park their truck, but also load heavy boxes and other types of household appliances in and out, what they'll do instead is they'll work with the city government to reserve a street spot ahead of time. The city professionals will come out 48 hours before, post signage letting the people around know that two or three parking spaces have been reserved so that way you have a dedicated spot for the movers to come and help move out all of your belongings. And again, a quality moving company in Germany will help coordinate all of this. But movers are by no means the only professionals that you should consider hiring. If you're going to be disconnecting and reinstalling certain household appliances, by not going through a certified professional, you could actually void out the warranty in Germany. Some good examples of this are your washing machine or your stove, for example. So this again is another professional that you are definitely going to want to get in touch with in preparation for your move. Okay guys, if you have any recommendations in addition to this list of things that you would suggest somebody moving to or from Germany be aware of, please make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed today's content, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, tschüss.